have my mother to thank for that, for filling my childhood with the art of storytelling. And I've also come to realize that it is the purest form of human connection. To learn to empathize with another through their story, essentially their narrative. And this is why I too will be beginning today with a story. This is the story of a young girl. She was born and bred here in this beautiful city, and my God, she loved to laugh. But that began to change. It began to change once the comments started. Comments such as, you're so scrawny. You're so skinny. My God, you're so dark. Do you play in the sun? Do you eat enough? Day in and day out. She was only seven years old at the time. Fast forward to that girl being 12. And she had a hellish ordeal of puberty unleashed upon her. And during that time, she decided that food was her only solace. Um, and it was a solace because her home environment and school just failed to provide the comfort that she was looking for. But that's when the floodgates of comments opened up even more. And it took a completely different tone. Mina, crueler, more judgmental. Words like murti, fatty, gali, dan were thrown at her relentlessly. And the home and mostly every family gathering became a nightmare. She was told to start dressing a certain way, to take her dupatta in a way, completely open so that it would cover her up. And her clothes inadvertently became baggier and bigger. Essentially, during this time, all she wanted to do was not exist. She wanted to hide and disappear. Fast forward to this girl being a 29-year-old woman. She has to constantly check herself and her posture because she's going to slouch. Something that reminds her of that need to vanish, to not exist, because she has been so programmed to be ashamed of her body. Her vulnerabilities are like deep scars for the world to see, and mean-spirited individuals have used the notion of ugliness to break her spirit. But there's a little something different this she has decided that her body is her home and she will fight for her right to live in it. I am that girl. And now that woman. And I also definitely want to point out that this outfit is horrendous. <laughs> but, um, and I'm standing before you today at the forefront of this battleground of the, of the war that the world has been waging against women's bodies for time immemorial. As a young South Asian woman, I have come to realize that my body has never been my own. I have been taught to believe by that whatever they perceive of me, they being a parent, grandparent, friend, or significant other, is all who I am. So essentially, my physicality is what defines me. The color of my skin, my height, my weight, how I choose to walk, talk, and carry myself in public. And straying from anything that is considered a cultural norm will automatically open up avenues for criticism, shaming, scrutiny. But let's just break it down here. To be told one is ugly, unfit, and undesirable simply because they do not fall into the category of what beautiful is. To be told that what you choose to be is not what wants what young women ought to do. To be told that you need to change because society demands that you change is quite simply unacceptable. And as a young woman who has been body shamed, scrutinized, and ripped apart, I'm making a very simple declaration here today. Enough. But this isn't just my story. To speak up and break the silence against the phenomenon of body shaming myself and a bunch of young, brave women filmed a series of video confessionals in which we openly shared our experiences. We talked about what was said to us and how it affects us to this day. And then we took a leap of faith and uploaded that video on the internet. We were not ready for the onslaught of overwhelming responses that we got and all of them resonating with our narratives. I received hundreds and hundreds of phone calls, messages, emails, articles, and the words, this is my story too, seemed burned into my screen. So let's talk about this universal narrative. And let's also talk about the women that own this narrative. Just in this hall today, please, with a raise of hand, how many women have been body shamed throughout your lives? Thank you. 
think that's a lot of hands, which is exactly why I want to come to my next question. Why are we body shamed? And again, why have we chosen to stay silent about it for so long? I will speak of the South Asian context of my experience, but I am not going to discount how it is a global phenomenon and affecting young women across the world. But I have seen my girlfriends go on ridiculous crash diets, be forced to use skin lightening products, be told by prospective suitors and their families that, you know what, I'm sorry, but she's too dark. Oh, but she's too overweight. And you know what, I'm sorry, she's not tall enough for my son. I have seen their spirits broken over these nonsensical conditions and so I've seen them spiral into a deep self-loathing and insecurity. I have seen contemporary fashion and entertainment industries distort psyches and encourage body dysmorphic tendencies in young women. Flip through pages and you see faces of bleached white women, flawless Photoshop limbs, such a far cry from reality. And these are the lies that we are feeding our young. Where was my role model when I was growing up? Where was the young woman with thick black hair, dark dusty skin, big brown eyes, her Punjabi hips and big lips? I didn't see her in any films. I didn't see her on any billboards or in magazine spreads. You know why? She didn't make the cut because she had someone else deciding her that she wasn't beautiful enough. I want to see it hair loud and clear today that body shaming is a form of emotional abuse. It is a form of bullying that women face daily, whether at home, at the workplace, at social gathering, or in public spaces. There is a constant message being sent through today's rapid-fire social media networks to women by commercial entities and the patriarchal powers that be that you are not okay. So let's lighten your eyes, let's bleach your face, tone your skin, and how about you swipe your finger and your, you know, your waist gets sucked in. And so the point being, and at the end of it, you upload all of that with a filter that says, with the hashtag that says, no filter. <laughs> in, which is why, having witnessed all of this, in November 2014, I found the bully a social awareness campaign aimed at teaching young minds the importance of empathy and perspective taking as a part of the community. We hold story sh shared sessions and workshops geared towards body positivity and encourage a climate of kindness and self acceptance, both in public institutions and in, and in educational institutions. In just two years alone, Bully Proof has spoken at over 15 schools in the city of Lahore, with an attendance including over 6,000 students and educators. My experience at school with these young women has been eye-opening. I never fathomed that I would witness a girl at the age of 10 breaking down into the solitary over the bullying that she suffered. And most of them pushed to the point where they contemplate taking their own lives. And usually it's about their physical characteristics. Usually it is a 10-year-old crying over the fact that she hates the way that she looks. But I have also witnessed real magic and healing take place during these sessions. So in the last 30 minutes of my workshop, I invite these young women to come and open this and openly share their stories. I tell them that as women, they will seldom get a space where they will not be judged for saying what they have to. And I encourage them to come forward and share their stories of being bullying. And I also encourage them to call on a friend, someone who supported them during that dark time. I myself have been moved to tears in every session um, when I have seen the unconditional love, empathy, and respect that these young girls have for one another. And all it takes is a night, and all it takes is a space to share your story. I just want to clarify that I in no way am rid of my insecurities uh, overnight. It is a constant struggle and even to be on this stage before all of you with my vulnerabilities bare um, has been extremely difficult. And I also want to assure people that have been calling me out on promoting an unhealthy lifestyle, I'm not encouraging you to go outside your McDonald's meal, man. <laughs> but I am, however, telling you that your physicality is not all you are worth. And I want to end by telling every woman that is here today that you are so much more than what you look like. 
And we as women need to realize that being pretty or beautiful is not all we are. We are meant to be so much more. We are kind and brave, resilient and honest. We are our hard work, our talent, our achievement, and we are second to none. What we don't realize is all those voices that call out your flaws or have called out your flaws in your past can sometimes become your own voice. Realizing that and learning how to reconcile with yourself is the first step to changing, to accepting who you are. So find your own voice and let that be your guiding force. And just know, at the end of the day, you are enough.